green chemistry. The basic structures, atom, and this is the model of atom. So this is the model called cloud model uh, talk in chemistry, and we look at this. We we look at the shell model. So the inside is called the nucleus. Nucleus, you have the subatomic molecules, proton and neutron. So proton has positive charge, and neutrons have no charge. So together, these two stay in the nucleus. And electrons have, uh, have negative charge, and they stay outside, we call them shell. So that's the basic structures of atom. And electrons stay in the shell, and when each shell is full, and the more of them are going to stay outside. And also the, the weight of proton and neutron, these two are a, a thousand times bigger than electron. So when they calculate the, the atomic weight, they only count proton and neutron together. They ignore the electron. So this is the basic structure of atom. So inside you have the nucleus, you have the proton which has positive charge. Neutron has no charge, stay inside. And electrons stay outside in a shell. So you have the first layer of shell, the second layer, the third layer. And the shell, the shell, the first layer is the small layer. It only can take two electrons. So if you have three, you put one, two, and the third one we're gonna go to the second layer. So the second layer, the third layer, uh, they can take eight. And every atom, they want to do their best to follow this rule. This rule is called the octate rule. Basically means uh, every shell need to be full. So the full means uh, the first layer need to have two, and the second one need to have eight, and the third one need to have eight. And the outside shell electron, we call them valence, valence electron. And most of those atoms, the outside shell, the valence shell is not full. And they need to make it full. So they need to lose, gain, share electron. And that's when we start to have those chemical bonds. So that they need to do their best to follow the octate rule. So that's the 288 rule. I call it 288 rule. And say this one, the outside the valence shell is one, they need to have eight, so it's it probably gonna lose this one. And once you throw this one away, this shell disappears, so the valence shell becomes this one, and it's eight. So that's what makes it happy. And like this guy, the outside is seven, so you probably need to find another one to make it happy. And in chemistry, happy means low energy. And that's when the chemical interaction starts. So they lose, they gain, or sometimes they share electrons. So let's look at those bonds. The first one is ionic bond. And we use sodium chloride as example. So sodium, he has 11 proton. Atomic number is 11. This is based on the number of uh, proton. So he has 11 proton. Proton has positive charge. And it, it has 11 protons. So you need to have 11 electrons to balance it. So he has 11 uh, negative charge. So the first layer, 2. The second layer, 8 and the third layer, 1, that's 11, right? And for sodium, okay, the, the valence shell only has one electron. So you need to find seven, which is very, very uh, unlikely. So you cannot lose this one electron, giving this electron away. So this shell disappear, and the valence shell becomes this one. And once you lose one electron, you only has 10. 10 electron, 10 negative charge, still have 11 positive charge, so his charge become positive 1. That's why the sodium like to stay in the positive 1 charge. We call the sodium ion. And let's look at chloride. Chloride atomic number is 17, so he has 17 proton. And 17 proton, 17 positive charge, you need to have 17 electron to balance it, because electron has negative charge. So when we start to draw the structure, the first layer, 2 electron, the, third, uh, the second layer, Eight, and the third layer, seven. And you need to find one more electron to make the valence shell full. So the chloride happily take this one electron from sodium. 
and once he take this one, he has 18 electron, 18 negative charge, only 17 positive charge, so his charge become negative 1. That's why the chlorine uh, like to stay in the negative 1 charge. And when sodium chloride stay together, and we know they are both very happy, and in chemistry, happy means low energy. So they are very, very stable, very, very low energy. And sodium chloride, we know that's the table salt. So this kind of bound by electron giving away, lose or gain electron, and this is the ionic bound. And the example, salt. And in a dry situation, they remain the uh, crystal structure and when we put them into water, they dissociate, become the sodium ion and chloride ion. And these charged particle ions, if they have positive charge, we call it cation, like the sodium is a cation, and chloride become the N ion. So these are the ions, uh, charged particle. Uh, ions have a fancy name called electrolytes. So sometimes you uh, watch the TV shows, talk about those uh, sports drink. They will tell you we, in the sports drink, we have a lot of electrolytes, and that's, that's ion. So basically, you can do it in your own kitchen. You just take some salt, add into water, and they become ions, and that's electrolyte. And example, while well, you have those positive charge ions, sodium ion, magnesium ion, this is positive too. So means it gives two electrons away. So for magnesium, it's still easier to give the valence shell of two electrons away than find six to, to make it full. So you will give two electrons away and it become a, a cation. And this one, uh, SO4, the whole group together is an ion. So the whole group uh, lose again uh, two electrons. So it's an it's a ion. And when you put ions, the salt, into water, they dissociate, they will dissociate, and they become the cation and an ion, positive charge, negative charge. And these ions, they play very important physiological role in human's body. And because first they, they create charge, and when they start to flow, those charged particle movement, we call them current. So actually in your body, you have small biological current. Uh, we will talk about those current in muscle and in neuron as well. So both of them, in the, in the muscle and in the neuron, they have those ions. And these ions, uh, they need to maintain the specific concentration as well. So when they are out of balance, you can feel muscle weakness, you may hurt, okay, you, you have muscle cramp, you eat banana, right? Banana, you have uh, potassium, and that's one of those ions. And in some serious case, you can, you can get sick or you can die. So these ions play a very important role in human's body. Okay, next bound is called the covalent bound. So the definition is electron sharing. They share electron. And like the carbon and hydrogen. So the carbon, uh, the, co uh, the valence charge is four. So they have four ions outside, uh, four electrons outside and they need to have four more electrons. So it will share with four hydrogen. Hydrogen atomic number is one, so it is one electron. And the first layer of shell, you need to have two. So he share another one with the carbon. So it turned out the carbon can, can form four, uh, sharing with four hydrogen. And this kind of electron sharing is called the covalent bound. So they can, like two hydrogen, they, they share electron and it's it's not belong to this guy not belong to this guy but they share so they, they call the covalent bound different from ionic bound ionic bound is 100 percent giving away and this is share so if they share one pair they use the one dash line they call the single bound and like the oxygen outside the valence uh, electron is six they need to have two more so they actually share two pairs and you, you found this is the double bound. So apparently the double bound is stronger than the single bound. And like the nitrogen, you need to have three, so it turned out it's a triple bound. And 
in the biological molecule in your body, those biological molecules would like to use carbon as a building block. And there's a reason, because carbon, the outside, it has four electrons. So it can form four covalent bound. That's why the carbon is a very good building block. They can form four covalent bound and with four hydrogen or with two oxygens double bound or it can combine with another carbon and suddenly he has three more choice so it can it can make this molecule very big and that's why the biological molecule uh, like the proteins carbohydrate lipid nucleic acid and this biomolecule they have hundreds sometimes thousands of carbons and they use carbon as a building building block because they can easily form a lot of covalent bound the covalent bound is electron sharing so when they share the electron uh, they can share them equally like this one two hydrogen they just share them equally you put those electron in the center and we call them nonpolar covalent bound but they can share them unequally unequally is one atom is bigger than the other and they can attract those electron closer to one side than the other and this electron has negative charge so it turn out uh, the charge will tilt to come closer to one side and we call this co polar covalent bound so this is defined by the electron shear unequally like the water water the oxygen is, atomic number is eight so it's eight proton inside so it's eight times bigger than hydrogen hydrogen is one atomic number is one so it only has one proton inside so this eight proton gonna attract this electron which has negative charge closer to the oxygen site so this electron come closer to the oxygen it's like you have uh, eight years old and one year old you say okay share the share the candy you know, which one gonna get more apparently the, the bigger one gonna pull them closer and those electrons has negative charge it come closer to the oxygen and apparently this part will be a little bit negative because the electron come closer and the hydrogen part will be a little bit positive so we call this polar molecule and this covalent bound a polar covalent bound so water water is the example and it's not completely negative so that's why they use the Greek number Delta partially means partially negative and the hydrogen side is partially positive so this is a polar covalent bound and the water is a polar molecule sometimes you have the molecule one side is polar the other side is nonpolar they call it the amphipathic molecule and good example phospholipid and this is a molecule we use as a building block of cell membrane and the head part like water is a polar molecule because water is polar and you also have two tail is nonpolar and we use this to create a cell membrane so it turn out the cell membrane have a very unique structure you need to use the double membrane so they need to take another one until 180 degree and put it down so they make the tail hidden inside and the head and the other one head facing outside because in the cell most of them is water so this is called amphipathic molecule so water is a polar molecule and it's universal solvent think about all the ions they can they can all the salt they can just dissolve in water and because water has the polar positive and negative sides they can surround the ions And water has partially positive side on the hydrogen and partially negative side on the oxygen. So they will attract each other. And this attraction is called a hydrogen bound. Not just in water, also in other molecules when they're a polar covalent bound, attract the ions uh, enough so they can create the partially positive, partially negative. They can attract each other. Uh, it's like the weak magnet because it's just partially so it's a weak attraction we call the hydrogen bound so first is a it's a weak attraction and second is between molecule very different from the other two bound the other two bounds are within molecule this is between molecule so the hydrogen bound and can keep water together 
So water has the big surface tension and it can have all this property is because of hydrogen bound. Okay, let's take a short break.